end this last video for the day, because uh, we're, we're talking about sampling and stuff, and what we're going to do now is we're going to talk a little bit about synthesizers and go into a little bit of a review of synthesizers, what we talked about on Friday and uh, Monday. And we're going to talk a little bit more about modular synths and getting those set up in your DAW and stuff like that. <clears throat> um, well, let's, let's do that, shall we? We shall. So let's use... Let's use Reactor again. Let's see, where am I going? I'm going over here. Actually, let's see what we got. I was trying to think if I have anything that's semi-modular. I actually do have this one. Semi-modular stuff's weird, and I don't like the interface of that one, so I'm not going to even open that one. Uh, yeah. All right, yeah, we're going to use Reactor. So I'm just going to go in here. Reactor 6. Boop. All right, and we're going to do patch. We're going to get this now. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go ahead and set some stuff up. And since we've already gone through this, what I'll do is I'll set some stuff up as I'm going. I'll talk about it. But I'm not going to worry about a particular, like, super simplistic patch although I'm not like I'm not like you know I'm not like a person who creates like crazy crazy patches for these things but I'm not gonna worry I'm gonna kind of just like go and play with some stuff in here so oh thanks there we go cool so here's this I got my keyboard set up let me turn the volume down over here all right and I'm going to open the screen up so you can see everything. There's that. Cool. All right. So we got this in here. I don't need it. Well, we'll keep the... Eh, no, I'm not going to use it. For the audio out. We definitely need that. So we're going to start. Instead of starting with the bento box stuff, we're going to go over here to our our other blocks in here and let's use some other ones let's go ahead and use um, some of these others here and before my computer crashed on my other computer I actually had a whole bunch of extra blocks that I had downloaded from various uh, people because you can actually get other uh, reactor blocks from other companies that other people have made which are pretty cool and there's a bunch of free ones and I've, I just haven't I never after I got my computer going again I never reinstalled those, so uh, one I'll, maybe I'll do that this weekend if I think about it. So let's do the five oscillator setting here, and this has got some. It's it's cool for kind of it's like a additive synth type of thing using square waves. Uh, so we're going to use that, and we'll use. Filter, let's use the same filter here. Boop. And I'll just go ahead and use my Bento Box uh, amp. Where is it? Oh, it's right there. There it is. Boop. There's that. And what I'm going to do now is put in my envelopes and stuff. And Let's, somebody had asked me before about making drum sounds, and we never did that. So let's do that now, actually. So what I'm going to do is use an ADS envelope, which is a tacked case of stain. Um, and because I, I don't need as much, I don't need as much envelope power uh, if I'm just making some drum sounds. So let's make, a, let's make some drums, and what I'll do is we will make a simple drum sequencer in here using a kick, a snare, and a hi-hat. And I'll make all the drums using this stuff. So we're going to use this and... Whoa. Why, Why did that happen? I'm going to go ahead and put the envelopes here. I'm going to keep all my drums together in here. 
So here's this, and we're going to make a mixer. And for the mixer, sorry, I don't remember. Where's the mixer? Mix four, here we go. Yeah, we'll use this mix four. And so I'm going to connect up the output of this oscillator into the here, this filter, and this one here is going to go into the VCA. The VCA is going to go into my mix four over here. And then the output of this is going to go over to here. And got that. And my envelope, the gate, let's well, I'm just, while I'm messing around with this right now, we're just gonna use the gate coming from my note in. And the pitch coming from the note in as well. And the output here is gonna go here, click on this. Turn that, there we go. that and this is a good sound to start with for a kind of an 808 type of kick and what we want to do is use another um, envelope let's use the same kind of envelope here let me just duplicate this one here duplicate and this one will go before my filter so it'll go here, the output of this will go to my filter here. And this one, I'm gonna use, we're gonna use this one to make a click on it in the sustain here, release. And we're gonna use this one to make a click sound on the beginning. So I want the click to be from the uh, filter popping up a little bit in the beginning. So, what I'll do with this is we'll set the decay shorter. Go over here and set this up. Cool. Even shorter. There we go. It's like a little pop in the beginning. Awesome. So we got that sound there. It's a nice little kick drum and I can probably put a little bit of resonance on. There we go. Cool. Don't really want the high pass filter there, but there's no F, there's nothing set to FM right now. Cool, and I can go ahead and put some more tones in here. Now, an oscillator like this is a really good thing to have uh, for a kick drum like this, because you have lots of different tones. And there you can fill in. I can mess around with the levels here to kind of mess with that. Sweet. Now, let's get a, let's, let's start with a hi-hat actually. I feel like as I'm talking about this, I feel like Bob Ross. As I'm talking about this, let's, 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 let's put a little hi-hat over here in this section over here, shall we? So let's go ahead and make our hi-hat sound. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the gate for now. Delete and delete, because I don't need to hear the kick drum anymore. For now, we're gonna come back and, and hear the kick drum again in a second. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have uh, all these things again, but slightly different versions of them. Let's see. <sighs> um, which one makes good noise sounds? I'm not really sure about that. So I, I like this filter, actually, because it has a high pass and a low pass. Let's just see what this filter looks like here. Nope, oh, I don't want that filter. And what I'm looking for is something that has a high pass in it. Let's see, the Monarch's probably not gonna be what I want. 
Oh, well, it has a bandpass in it. Eh, let's, let's come back and see about that one. Comb filter, Paul filter. Nope, that's just a low pass filter. The comb filter is probably not what I want. I don't really want a comb filter. Comb filters are dope, but not for my purposes here. Kodiak morph filter. Huh, probably not. Maybe some of those later. Let's see what we got. Distortion, that'll probably be good for the snare drum maybe. Maybe even for the kick here. Let's see. Boutique, the dual SK filter. That's the one we're using here. So let's, yeah, let's go ahead and use that one again. And the multi-wave oscillator. So I want an oscillator with some noise in it. So let's see if I have anything that's actually got some noise. These are all actual tones. Let's see, there's a noise generator. Let's see what this DWG oscillator has. It looks cool. Oh, Monarch, Kodiak. Duality oscillator. Flip gen oscillator. This one might be. This one might make it some noisiness. Yeah, let's see what that one does. We got that there. And we're going to use. Since we're dealing with drums, I'm just going to use the same. Whoops. Same thing. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate. That down here and we're gonna duplicate this one as well duplicate and put this one down here and duplicate this one as well keeping things easy boom cool all right so I'm gonna load these up go in here to the input and the output the input here and this is going to go up here to number two. Actually, let's, let's bring it to number three. And I'll keep number two reserved for my snare drum. There's that there. And the output of this is going to go into the input of this one. And this one, you don't need as much click and stuff on the hi-hat because the hi-hat's pretty much just click, but let's just go ahead and Keep it there. And then the output of this is going to go into the uh, A here. And let's get our gate. Our gate here and the pitch. Oh, that's interesting. Pitch an oscillator, is it? Yeah, that's definitely noise. That's exactly what I wanted. Cool. And it doesn't matter what note I play on here, so let's go ahead and change my frequency here. That's a perfect sound. Love it. Huh. Awesome. Now I've got this one here. And we're going to make a pop on the beginning. This is what am I making with this? A hi hat, right? Not the snare drum. But I can use the same thing for a snare drum. So let's use this one here. Cool. Nice. Awesome. That sounds like a snare drum to me. 
I mean, not a snare drum, sorry. That sounds like a hi-hat to me. <laughs> it doesn't sound like a snare drum to me. Oh, I'm going nuts. All right. Sweet. That sounds pretty good there. And now let's add a snare drum into the mix, shall we? And I'm going to use the same stuff for my snare drum. I'm going to go ahead and just duplicate all of this. Right click and go to duplicate selected. And then pull it, pull these ones. Down. Like that and my snare drum is here. Cool. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm not going to control my hi hat. I'm going to delete the cables to control my hi hat. I guess and now there's my I'm just going to change these the out is going to go to here number two that sounds like a hi-hat now so let's make it sound a little bit more like a snare Sounds cool. Now a snare drum is gonna have uh, like a little bit more tone to it. Snare drums have some tone to them. So right now we're not getting any tone. That's literally just noise. So let's add in a sound into this to give it some tone. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this boutique one here. We're gonna duplicate this one. I'm gonna pull it down to this one down here. Boop and get some tone out of this. Now, in order to hear both of these at once, we're gonna need a mixer. So, we're gonna grab the output from this one. I'm just gonna go ahead and get rid of that. And we're gonna use a little mixer. We're gonna use the bento box mixer, bento mix, because we don't need much of a mixer. Like right there. And set the output from this one here. And I'm gonna have the Oh, I took the wrong one. Here, let's grab this one over here. Boop. I mean, it's fine. It's not a big deal. I hadn't changed anything. So number two is going to be the that one. So the actually no. Let, let, let me hold on. Let me do that back. Let me do that the other way. I'm going to have this one be the the synth tone because it's going to be a lower pitch, and this one's going to be the the noise on top. And I'm going to go ahead and save this ensemble. Save as it's gonna be so drums. I can call it B drum, snare drum, closed hat sequence. Like this. Cool. All right, so we got that. Now I don't need to see the uh, browser. Hide the browser. I said, oh, can I? All right, well, I guess I can't hide my browser. Oh, I can like that, there we go, okay, cool. All right, so hold on one second. There we go. I I just had to send a message to the outside world. Ha ha ha. And down here, move this up to number three. Do 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 do. Cool. And my gate is going to my snare drum. Why am I not hearing it though? Oh, the out here needs to go to the end. There we go. Okay, so there's this. There we 
there's that. And now let's get this one here to be a higher pitch. Turn this one down. And you can hear that. It's not really loud enough. Oh, we need to get the pitch coming from here, the note end pitch. There we go. Yeah. There we go. And what I'll do does that sound like a snare drum to y'all? I mean it's like obviously it's gonna be like a like an 808 type of snare. Make it shorter on the decay maybe. Let's get some more. Sounds, I think it sounds pretty pretty good to me. Turn the volume up so I can hear it better. Cool. All right. So turn this one. We just want a little bit of tone in there. Sweet. So that's what those drum sounds sound like. And I think they're pretty good for sounding like, you know, very, very analog drums, but I think they're sounding pretty cool as it is. Now let's get all these playing together at once, shall we? So what we need for this is we need a few sequencers. So the first thing we're gonna do is use the browser over here. I'm gonna go over here to my uh, blocks digilog and we're gonna use the clock divider. So the clock divider, what it does is it sends out, uh, it, it takes the clock and it makes some of it go slower and faster. It sends out like slow clock, fast clock, stuff like that. And actually, now that I think about it, I don't think we actually need this one. because I'm not doing any kind of crazy stuff. You know what, just to make it life easier, I'm gonna get rid of that. And we're gonna use the Bento, the eight steps sequencer. And we have to use a couple of these. So here's this one, and I'm going to use it again on the snare drum. I'm going to use it again on my hi-hat down here. So we have this. <coughs> and now we're going to get rid of the, um, the gate out of these. It's going to be different here, and the pitch we're going to turn the pitch off as well. And now we're going to set this up. So we got eight steps here. And yeah, that's all we can do is eight steps. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have, let's see. Oh, okay. This is where I would use the, yep. Yeah, all right. So here we can use this. I'm gonna use the Digilog Quantizer, oops, the clock, clock divider rather, for this. So the gate is gonna go into this and we're gonna keep it 16th. And this number one here, I'm gonna turn off these. So what these numbers mean here, if we're looking at this, these numbers, this one here means that for every one step, which is 16th, it's gonna, it's gonna hit once. 
and this one here is that for every two steps it's going to hit once. So that's basically eighth notes, and this one here is for every four steps uh, it's going to hit once. This one here is for every four steps it's going to hit once. So I want this one, and if I want my six, if I want my um, my uh, hi hat to be going sixteenth notes, I'd have it coming out of number one. Ticket, 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 ticket. And if I wanted my snare drum to be every two quarter notes, then I have it on here. And this one here is eight steps long. But actually, you know what? For this, for this one, it's fine. For the kick and the snare, it's fine. Uh, but I might want a little different sequencer. I feel like there's another sequence in here that did have 16 steps, but maybe not. That's a weird sequencer. Do, 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 do. Let's see what this curve. I think this curve sequencer is not what I want. Well, it is 16 steps. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna worry about it. Just to keep things a little bit easy, and just because I'm not exactly sure, I'm just gonna keep this here. All right. So now, so what I didn't do, what I want to do right now is I'm gonna mark these. So this one here is my kick. I go to properties and just call this one bass drum. This one here is my snare drum. This one here is my closed hat. There we go. So I just I know what's going on with stuff. And over here, I guess I'm good with that stuff there. So now, the pitch is going to go for my bass drum. I need the pitch, so it's going to go in here to my boutique oscillator. The snare drum. I also need the pitch in my boutique oscillator. This is the output of stuff. And then what I'm gonna do is the gate of this one for my snare drum is, I mean, my, 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 bass, my kick drum sequencer is gonna go out to this one and to this envelope here. And my snare drum is gonna be the same thing. It's gonna go out to my gate here, my, uh, this envelope here for my filter, and also for my amp. And down here, my snare drum is, I don't need the, I mean, sorry, my hi-hat. I don't need the pitch, but I do need the envelopes. I need these envelopes to be in the right places. Now the input is gate for number one is, uh, it's gonna be my hi-hats. Actually, let's keep these things straight. So for every four, and this one here, yeah, same, number two is gonna be every four as well, and this one here will be every one. I, that might be backwards, that might be 16s, I'm not sure, I might have to change that up. So this one here, and the reason why I'm keeping it one, two, and three is because this will be my kick. Go over here and do the gate. This one here will be my snare drum. I'm gonna connect that up to the gate. And number three will be my hi-hat. I'm just keeping things organized here. So this will be my gate. And the reset will come here, reset, yes. And I want the reset to go for these as well. And I think, yeah, we should be good. All right, let's hit play. Yeah, there we go. Ah, 
made a little drum sequencer. Now I can go ahead and mess with this kick drum. And there you go. That worked pretty well actually. Uh, now, if you were expecting some crazy drums, we're gonna do all sorts of weird, crazy things. We could set that up, but that's like a lot more different setup stuff. Also, keep in mind, analog drums don't really sound that crazy and weird. If you've ever listened to an analog drum machine without any effects on it, which is essentially what we've just made, uh, it's not that cool sounding. All the coolness really comes from setting up other uh, effects and stuff like that if you're just making straight up analog drums. In this case, that's what we're doing. We're just making straight up analog drums, but we can set up some different stuff because obviously this hi-hat, we can I can set some things over here. Let me go ahead and turn the pitch down on this kick drum as well. with all these. Set it to an F. Nice. And we can mute these up here, just mute them. There we go. Sweet. Got that there. And let's get this hi-hat going again. And let's set up something to control this change module, this chance module right here. Let's get an LFO in there. So what we'll do is we'll go back over here to these and uh, let's go into, let me stop that real quick. Where's LFOs? Any cool LFOs in here? Rounds, LFO, well. Yeah, let's use the bento box LFO because it's just, it's easy to understand what it is, what it's doing. So here's our LFO, and the LFO, we're gonna connect it up to, uh, this one doesn't have a way to, hold on. Let's see what the rounds LFO does. Okay, we'll just use this one here. Bento box LFO. And I'm gonna take the LFO out and set it to go to an A here, and A, I'm gonna have control of this. Move my chance back. Okay, have that set up like that. And I'm gonna have it reset. Let's set these, let's set the reset now. Now we're getting some cool uh, rhythms going on with this. If I mess with my filter here, and if I mess with the frequency, turn into more of a percussion sound.
sweet. Turn the volume up on this bad boy. Okay, cool. And we gotta, gotta you know, getting the sounds a little bit tweaked out here. Let's mess around with this snare drum. Now if I put some effects on this, we can make it pop a little bit more. I turn it down just so it's not crushing our ear, our ear holes. up. I can mess with my mix. here into here I'm gonna go ahead and stop that. So uh, now it's really time to open up for any kind of questions because I've just gone through a whole bunch of stuff. And if you've been paying attention, you've probably learned a lot about routing stuff or at least you've gotten a lot to think about about waking, making things with what you can do with Reactor. And I know this looks like a lot and pretty complicated, but it's not really that much, it's just the same thing three times, really. You can see here I've got uh, my oscillators, one, two, three oscillators, sections, and I've got an oscillator here as well. So I have my kick drum here, which is just an oscillator, a filter, and an amplifier with two envelopes. And then I've got my snare drum, which is two oscillators, one for this noise part, one for the, 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 the body part. And then again, just the same filters and amplifiers. And then down here, I've got my, uh, for my closed hi-hat. From the time back in college, I sat in physics class for a whole semester. That's all. <laughs> Was that good or bad? <laughs> I mean, did you learn how to survive a black hole? Yeah, I mean, it's... 
Yeah, I mean, a lot of uh, using synthesizers and music and stuff is physics. I mean, there's a lot. If you haven't noticed that by now, it's there's a lot of physics involved in uh, audio engineering and synthesizers and stuff like that. And this is pretty nerdy stuff, but um, if you are... It depends on how far out there you want to go. If you're a songwriter uh, or if you are... Uh, somebody like a piano player, singer, songwriter type. Yeah, this is gonna be meh, maybe, but you, there's it, it. Hopefully, can maybe give you some ideas for things. Maybe you're not gonna want to do this yourself, but at least it's gonna open up some like, oh, this stuff is out there, and I could team up with somebody who is interested in making this kind of weird stuff. I have uh, here. Let's, because this isn't even this isn't weird. This is like just pretty normal stuff. But we can slow this down, of course, you know. And, into some really weird sounding stuff. And I can go over here and I can change what this is doing. Right here. Huh. Oh, it's this LFO. The LFO is what's doing it, making it weird. some really weird stuff I don't know um, actually RJ what was what RJ was talking about with the uh, the Nine Inch Nails uh, Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross if, if they released like a Ghosts album uh, today that's gonna have a lot of like weird sounds and interesting stuff on it probably the Ghost albums are just like them kind of messing around in the studio with a lot of analog gear and just making weird it's the Ghost albums to me sound like kind of like pieces of songs they're very cool. They're cool ideas and stuff like that, but it's not like it's uh, it's it's like lots of weird sounds and stuff like that, which is very very cool. Um, and they give you some ideas for what you can, you know, what you can mess around with. Sweet. Uh, any other questions? Is Lewis still here, linking hearts, or any of you guys have any questions? RJ, you want to chime in about anything? Yes, cool. I'm glad you're here. Do you have any questions or thoughts about this or anything? Uh, it's going to be up online, so you can go through the stuff again. Cool. Awesome. Well, I'm glad you guys are still here keeping up. Um, yeah, well, happy Thursday to y'all. As, as usual, at the end of all this, my brain is a little bit scrambled right now after talking for four hours straight. And uh, oh, almost straight with a couple of breaks in there. But um, yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot to go through. Uh, cool. So like I mentioned before, here, if I put this back up, I'm not actually going on break right now. I'm just going to put this back up. There we go. Break time. Nope, that's a lie. My cat. Yay, kitty. Um, tomorrow, online tips and tricks. Friday, March 27th from noon to noon 30. And we'll be talking about some tips and tricks and stuff. Uh, so join us for that. Um, it's not going to be here on my Twitch channel. It's going to be some, I don't know, SAE. Like there's a, a way to get an invite for that. So send Kathleen. 
um, email about that. And if you're watching this in the future, then it definitely doesn't apply to you. Um, and, oh, at some point tomorrow, I have to talk to my friend and see what time he's available because he's the one who requested it. And he said somebody's coming over to his house at like 6 p.m. So maybe let's say from like 4 to 6, uh, let's, let's get online tomorrow from 4 to 6. I'll send, you, I'll, I'll send everyone a Canvas message. But let's say from 4 to 6, let's go uh, and uh, look at some, some music and talk about music in terms of like DJing and stuff and like basics. And what I want to do is I want to kind of deconstruct some songs and talk about that because that's a lot of people who ask me about DJing. I know, right? Yeah, nowhere to go. I know. But a lot of people who ask me about DJing, they ask me about, um, like, how do you know when to start the next song and stuff like that. And I think that's a really important thing. But what that requires is some kind of understanding of not music theory, but kind of music theory. And so what I want to talk about with DJing tomorrow is kind of deconstructing that a bit. And, and like, the, the idea behind when to start the song and, and why, these do, why do these two songs go together? Uh, yeah, structure and stuff like that more than just like, I mean, I'll talk a little bit about like, this is an EQ, like low, high and stuff. But my friend who requested this, he actually knows about all that stuff. He's fine with that stuff. It's really what he needs to kind of, I think, where I want to, where I want to help him is more about understanding why we would start the song here and why is it better to start the song there. And I'm gonna do it probably with the um, with the uh, sync button turned on tomorrow. Not because not because I recommend using the sync button necessarily, or not because he doesn't use the sync button anymore. Uh, but just because I don't really want to be worried about the 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 mixing part of mixing. I want to know. I want to talk about the the theory behind when to start songs and when to stop songs and stuff like that. Yeah, groove. Uh, RJ says, I'd say it has a lot to do with knowing song arrangements. It does, but what if you don't even know a song arrangement? How can we, like, what if you're not, like, a lot of DJs, um, you know, when you're getting music a lot, a lot, a lot, often, uh, you don't always have time to, like, study songs. And, like, I, like, for me personally, I'm not good at remembering stuff. Like, my memory is really bad. So if I listen to a song and I'm like, that song is dope and it's got a good groove to it and I really like it and I like the overall song, but I'm never going to remember the arrangement of the song. So what are some tricks that I use for kind of cheating a little bit when I'm standing in front of a CDJ and stuff like that? Um, those are the things I want to get into. So uh, counting bars. Yeah, counting bars. I don't count bars so much. Um, I have other little tricks that I use for stuff. And it's really not, it's, it, it is about counting bars to a point, but it's also about just listening to the music and stuff like that. So can we go over the setup? a bit also. We can definitely go over the setup a bit also. Uh, so we'll, we'll talk about that, but I, I, I want to, maybe we can do that on another day. Maybe we can do like inter, like intermediate slash advanced DJ stuff tomorrow and beginner DJ stuff another time. Uh, because uh, especially tomorrow, my, my friend who requested this is not a beginner DJ. He's more intermediate advanced level DJ. And so he just had some real specific questions. But maybe if we do it for like an hour or two hours, it depends on how many people are online. If it's like two people online with me, I'm going to stop after an hour. If it's, unless, unless like he's one of them and he's asking a bunch of questions. But if it's like 15 people or 20 people, then I'll probably keep it going for a couple hours. So if you're hanging out and you don't have nothing to do tomorrow afternoon from four to six, join me. Yay. Awesome. Thanks. That was a lot of fun. And I'm going to stop the recording now. So bye recording people.